So we were really fortunate to have um, a variety of different artifacts come to the school based on some of the old American Osteopathic physicians who passed away in the area that were trained in the United States. We use them as references and they're kind of prized possessions here at the school. Some of the uh, natural skeleton that we have behind us is uh, from Dr. Christensen. The, the boots come from Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine and they were given to us by the museum there. The uh, bellows are, is also from Kirksville as well. So with a lot of the literature that we have here at the school, what's most interesting is some of the personal correspondences that come out from between the pages of these books that are dated, you know, 1905, 10, 12, 15. It was very interesting to recognize that the, the people that actually owned these books, the part of their personal collection, they were there in front of the authors when the authors were giving seminars or courses and uh, there are handwritten letters uh, within the pages from Dr. Sutherland and many others talking about uh, the progression of the discovery and how they're going on with their work and what they would like the work to mean in the future. It's just great because it takes us right back to the classrooms at the time when these great osteopaths were talking about this information and uh, we get it firsthand. The books are very interesting because it's very difficult to get osteopathic literature anymore that is truly osteopathic. Um, a lot of the books that we have in our collection here are really speaking about osteopathy and osteopathic principles. They're out of date, they're, they're not being printed any longer. They were the foundational roots to the development of the profession. It's really the philosophy coming alive through science. And we have, we have so many references here, from lymphatic work to the neuroanatomy, neurophysiology, uh, disease process, all the things that really make osteopathy unique and different are uh, here at the school and we use them all the time. We start to recognize how the earliest osteopaths were seeing the body and it's, uh, it's very different than perhaps the way we see it today. It's phenomenal to actually have the original presses of Dr. Sutherland's lectures. We have records here in the archives where we actually get to hear Dr. Sutherland lecture on the principles and concepts of cranial osteopathy. So um, that's, that's wonderful because uh, we have the, you know, the, the man who really put all that together. We have his, his actual words for our students to get a better understanding of what, what he was really trying to bring across. We have some very, very old anatomy, hand-drawn plates, anatomical plates, three-dimensional plates, from different perspectives that gives the students a three-dimensional understanding of how the structure and functions do come alive. So we have a, a wide variety of resources for our students. The stuff that we have here is really, um, as far as as far as a resource is concerned, it's unmatched. And it really does ground the students in the profession. And it, in many ways, it delineates and ha helps them understand the difference between osteopathic manual practice and uh, other forms of manual therapy. And without these books, without these resources, we just become homogenized into the greater whole. And people have a hard time understanding what it is that we bring to the therapeutic table. Students reference them, they use them in their papers, um, I use them in my lessons and they're invaluable as far as uh, trying to create, create an environment from which is, it is truly osteopathic.